So now let's take a closer look at what allows sharks to breathe, their gills. Now we already know that sharks have five pairs of bilateral gill slits, apart from a few specialist species like the cow sharks and a species of ray. So similar to human respiratory organs, our lungs, the gills are where respiration takes place or gaseous exchange. So this is where oxygen is removed from the environment and brought into the body for respiration. And that's where waste products such as carbon dioxide are removed from the body and released out into the environment. Now there are three main factors that pretty much all respiratory organs have in common. First of all, they always have a very high surface area to allow for a lot of diffusion. They also have a very dense capillary structure, which is the very small blood vessels that are surrounding and sort of run alongside the respiratory organs, so the gills for this example. And then finally, they always have a very, very thin membrane or wall between the blood system and the external environment, which is the water. And this allows for the most effective gaseous exchange. Now sharks gills do vary from bony fish's gills in a few ways. First of all, how we mentioned at the start that fish have gills that are covered by a bony case called an operculum, where sharks, as we know, have their five, six or seven exposed gill slits. Another way that sharks gills vary from bony fish gills is that bony fish's gill filaments attach to the gill at only one end. So therefore the other end is sort of free floating. Whereas elasmobranch gills, the filaments are attached along their length to an interbrachial septum. Interestingly, these gill arches are where elasmobranchs actually first got their name. As if you roughly translate elasmobranch, it translates to plate gills. And this is referring to the way that the gills line up next to each other. Now, the main function that is vital to understand about gills is how they optimize oxygen transfer as there are a number of factors that make water a much harder medium to breathe in than air. Now, first of all, we can consider that air pretty much always consists of roughly 21% oxygen. In comparison, water on average only contains about 1% oxygen saturation. And even then, there are some areas in the ocean, such as the deep oceans, which actually have much lower oxygen content. Now add this to the fact that water is heavier, it flows slower, and actually is less willing to give up its oxygen, you can start to imagine that the, the challenges that fish physiology faced when designing gills. Now the main way that gills optimize oxygen transfer above and beyond what we've already talked about in the high surface area and the very thin membranes is what we call using counter current flow. And this means that the blood inside the gills flows in the opposite direction to the water that is flowing outside of the gills. And we can see using this graphic how it helps maximize diffusion. Now this principle can confuse some people, so let's go over it with a few examples. For this example, we're gonna use really simplified numbers for oxygen content. Now this obviously doesn't represent real numbers in the real world, but it makes it much easier for us to understand how the different concentrations will move across gradients. So let's first of all look at if they flowed both in the same direction, so not using countercurrent flow. The water with the highest oxygen content, let's call that 100%, would come into contact with the blood with the lowest oxygen content. Again, let's give this a 0% content as deoxygenated blood arrives at the gills. Therefore, the diffusion at first would be very fast due to the very high concentration gradient between the very oxygenated water and the little oxygenated blood. But as we move along the gills, as the water oxygen content gets lower and the blood oxygen content increases, once they reach 50% saturation, so as the blood reaches gets up to 50% and as the water gets down to 50%, they will then stop any sort of gaseous transfer because there is now no concentration gradient, both being at 50%. So now let's look at the counter current flow. So now the blood flow is going to be going in the opposite direction to the water. So really when the water reaches the gills, it is reaching blood that has already been traveling along the gills and being oxygenated 
by other water. Therefore, the water is going to have a high oxygenation because it's just reaching the gills, but that blood is also going to have high oxygenation because it's been running along the gills, being oxygenated by other water already. So therefore, they're both going to have high oxygen concentrations, but the water is still going to have a higher concentration of oxygen. Therefore, there's still going to be a diffusion gradient along into the blood. Now, if we look at the other end of the gills, so after the water has run along the gills, giving up lots of its oxygen, it reaches the end of the gills, which is where the new blood is coming in. Now, this blood is obviously very low in oxygen as it's just come from around the body. So again, let's give this an example of 0% oxygen. But because the water has been traveling along the gills, that also has a low oxygen content, let's say 10%, but yet there is still a diffusion gradient so therefore, even when the water oxygen concentration is as low as 10%, there is still diffusion across the gradient into the blood. And so this makes oxygen transfer much more efficient instead of just stopping at 50%. So now let's quickly talk about the two different methods of breathing that sharks use. The first one is called ram ventilation. And this is used by most of the free swimming sharks, less so on the bottom dwelling sharks. And this is basically the technique of allowing water to run into the mouth and over the gills as you swim. So obviously ram ventilation doesn't take any extra effort, but you do need to be swimming to ram ventilate, which is where a lot of people get the statement, sharks have to keep swimming to continue breathing. And this is a fact for some sharks, but many sharks don't rely solely on ram ventilation, as they can use the other form of breathing, which is called buckle ventilation. And this is when water is actively pumped over the gills by opening and closing the mouth continuously, as you can see in the video here. Now, obviously this does take a bit more effort, but does pump fresh water over the gills. So it allows sharks to continue breathing when they are inactive, such as laying on the sea floor. And this technique is obviously utilized much more by much more bottom dwelling and less active sharks. This also links quite well with the spiracles, as the spiracles are doing a similar function. They are active in pumping water down onto the gills, but just from a different point of the body. Okay, so that gives you a really good insight into the gills, how they work and why they are such an incredible engineering feat when it comes to removing oxygen from the water. So next, we're going to look at another incredible adaptation that sharks have which is their skin and their dermal denticles.